Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House and welcome back to the Abandoned Coffee Shop Project. I'm Aira and today I'm going to tell you how I made these countertops and this old rusted out sink. So let's get started. I had a pretty good idea of where I wanted everything to go. I wanted a countertop along this back wall with the sink kind of in the middle, one going towards the window and then one on the other side of my telephone. And I'm just kind of measuring to get an idea of what I want. Of course, if you're making something similar, you'll have to make your own measurements to make sure everything fits. And I'm also using this balsa wood. I'm not a big balsa wood fan, but I had it and I thought it was a great thickness for my countertops. The reason I don't like balsa wood is it dents really easy. I find it very soft and um, it can cause some problems. But for an old beat up countertop, I thought it was perfect. Here are my measurements. I'm making my countertops an inch and a half deep and then uh, the long one is going to be four and three eighths long and then the one going towards the window is going to be three and three eighths and then my small one is going to be a square so it is also one and a half inches. Next I'm going to mark out all those measurements straight onto my balsa wood but I'm going to be using my pencil lightly because like I said the balsa wood does dent very easily so you could dent it very easily with a pencil if you're marking too hard. Next, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and cut out the pieces. One thing that is nice about balsa wood, because it's so soft, I can use an X-Acto knife and I don't have to get out any power tools. So if you're someone who doesn't have access to power tools, balsa wood can be a really nice option. After I have everything cut out, I'm going to lay it out to make sure it's what I like and then I'm actually going to cut diagonals on the corner pieces because I want them to meet up in the corner. To make these nice 45 degree angles, I'm just going to measure an inch and a half from the side and make sure I'm cutting my um, diagonal on the correct side <laughs> of the wood. Um, it's really nice to draw this out first so that you don't get confused. Next, I'm just going to gently place it into my project to make sure that everything fits. And I'm also going to plan out where I want my sink to be. I wanted one of those long metal sinks. Um, I see them a lot in uh, smaller establishments that maybe just have um, a, little, a few things to sell. Um, but they're just smaller sinks. They're very much a work sink. And that's what I was picturing for this coffee shop. So I've marked it out, I've made the line straight. I didn't really measure it um, to a specific dimension. I just kind of went with what looked good and I made sure to leave enough room on the back of the counter where I could put my faucet and handles. Now I'm going back to check it once again. I do this a lot in my projects because I don't always write my plans down first. I'm very visual and so to see it in my project either confirms or makes me think of a different way I want to do something. Now I am going to add a little bit of aging to these countertops. I'm going to be using X-Acto, a file, and then just kind of a sharp pointy tool. And I'm going to be whittling away at the balsa wood pieces. I'm using the pointed tool to make deep scrapes into the wood. Um, if this wood had been outside for several years, uh, the wood would have split. It would have dry contracted from um, the process of getting wet and then drying back out from being outside. And then I'm also taking my file just to file down some of the edges to make some of the cuts a little bit deeper. And I want to make sure that the edges of my counters are very worn and not sharp. I'm going to do that for all three of my pieces. Now I'm going to give it a darker look because this is a very pine colored wood. I want to start out by making it look a very vibrant brown. So I'm mixing a little bit of brown acrylic paint with water and that's acting as a stain. I used to use stain on my projects but I found that it was unnecessary and I prefer to use acrylic mixed with water. This also helps with the fumes as stain usually has a lot of fumes associated with it. So I'm going to stain all three pieces and then I can start that same process but with a little bit of black and I'm gonna make sure I get that black into a lot of the creases that I've created just to give it a little bit more depth into its distressing. 
One side note I want to mention is that because the balsa wood is very lightweight and spongy, it does soak up the paint quite a bit. So check back after it's dried out. It may be a different color than when it started. Now I'm going to use some gray paint with a dry brush and I'm just going to brush it over the paint that I've already put on there to create an aged look. Usually when wood gets very old, it definitely takes on a gray color. I will also just brush on a few white highlights just around the edges. I'm going to do this equally on all three pieces. Next I'm going to be building the sink basin. I'm using this very thin long popsicle stick and I'm cutting off one end because I don't want any rounded ends and I'm just going to start marking with my pencil around the hole of where the sink is going to exist and I'm going to go around the entire sink to create a box that lines up with the edge that I cut for the sink. You could probably measure this all out and it might make it a little bit easier, but um, I prefer just to kind of wing it and go with the flow. Uh, it's kind of how I work and it works for me. So feel free to do it your own way, but I like to just um, measure it as I go. I didn't show you the bottle, but I am using tacky glue to put this onto the bottom and I'm making sure that my edges are glued to the underside of the counter and also to each other. Now I'm going to use one of these jumbo popsicle sticks to make the very bottom of the sink base. I didn't mention it before, but um, this is the underside of the counter that you are looking at. I understand that might be confusing because we are building the basin of the sink, so the counter is flipped upside down. I'm just going to take that piece of jumbo popsicle that I cut and I'm just going to glue it to the pieces that I already glued on there. I am I have decided to glue my L pieces together. You do not have to do this right now. I actually ended up um, being a little bit nervous that it might break apart. Uh, you can totally do this step after you work on the sink. It might be a little bit easier or you can do it now. I made it work but that's up to you. I just reinforced that joint with a couple pieces of popsicle stick. They will be underneath the counter pretty far back in my project so no one should be able to see them. Now I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to round out the corners of my sink basin. Again, like I said, my counter is upside down so the sink basin is bottom up and this is what you'll be able to see underneath the counter. And I'm rounding it out because most sink basins are metal and well this type is metal and the basin is rounded at the corners and along the edges. Next I'm going to add a layer of wood glue. This is going to smooth out my wood and it's going to give it a more metallic texture once I paint it. I only ended up doing one layer of wood glue but after I painted it I figured I probably could have done another layer and it would have looked even better. After that's done, I'm going to get out my wood filler. I'm going to start on the top part of the sink. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of wood filler inside of the sink basin. And this is going to create a seamless transition from the wood popsicle stick part of the sink onto the counter because I want to make it look like the sink wall is going all the way from the bottom to the top of the countertop. Next I'm going to take some small, it's like a thin piece of cardboard, it's the kind of stuff you get in packages with shirts or socks. I just save those. You can also use cardstock for this if you'd like to. I'm going to cut a very small strip, probably about an eighth inch strip, and again I am going to kind of frame the outside edge of the sink opening. This is going to look like the lip of the sink that's coming out over onto the top of the countertop. I'm not measuring these, I'm just, as I'm going, I'm putting them onto the countertop and marking them with a pencil and then cutting them so that they fit. Once I have the sink opening completely framed, I'm going to do the same thing with the wood glue that I did on the opposite side of the counter. I'm going to completely cover the sink with wood glue. This is going to give it that same metallic texture that I want once I paint it. I'm using a Q-tip to help get into the sink 
because it was pretty small, it was hard to get in there, so the Q-tip helped. While I put that off to the side to dry, I'm going to go ahead and make the faucet and the handles. I'm going to use a Q-tip for this, and I'm just going to cut the fuzzy ends off, and I'm going to soak one end into the water. This is kind of to loosen up the paper so that I can bend it around a ballpoint pen body. I want to create that kind of gooseneck shape that's going to come up and over the edge of the sink. And now I'm just going to cut the other end off so that I have a J shape ready to be installed. Just a side note, it might take you a few minutes of holding it in place to get the shape that you really want. Now I'm going to hold the faucet head up to my countertop so I can figure out where I want it and how tall I want it to be. Because the balsa wood is so soft, I can use my X-Acto blade, moving it back and forth to create a hole. After I have that done, I can put some tacky glue in there, insert my faucet, and leave it to dry. Now I'm going to create the handles. I'm just going to cut two very small pieces, about a quarter inch tall, and these are going to become the main shafts for the handles. So you will need two of these if you are making two faucet handles. And I'm going to take some of that cardboard that I had previously and I'm going to cut a trapezoid shape. Um, I'm going to make two of those to be the wings that come off the side of the faucets. Now all I need to do is attach those two pieces with tacky glue and I should have some faucet handles. If you're following along with this, you'll probably want to use some tweezers to actually put these guys in place. They are very tiny. What I do is I just dip the end of it into some tacky glue, find the spot that I want it on the counter, and gently press them on. Mine are not completely straight, but that's okay because mine have been out in the open for years and years, so I'm not worried about them being straight, but if you're doing a nicer project, you can work on getting them where they stand straight up and down. Now I'm taking a base coat of paint of gray and painting all the pieces on my sink that would be metal. So that would be the inside of my sink, the bottom of my sink, which is on the other side, and then the faucet head and the faucet handles. That's just a flat matte gray for my base coat. Next I'm going to take a silver metallic paint and do the same thing, coat all those pieces with one coat of the silver paint. Now my piece is ready to be installed. I'm going to take some tacky glue and glue it straight onto my project. I went back and forth a lot about what I wanted the supports of these countertops to look like. Um, I'm still not sure I'm completely happy, but for now I decided to use those triangle pieces, age them, and put them underneath the countertops. This is going to add a little bit of support. I can actually rip them out later if I decide I want something else. Uh, like a, a leg, an actual leg, or cabinets. For now, I'm just sticking with these. Also, I decided I didn't want that other piece of countertop because it blocked the phone. So I decided to cut it in half and make a shelf out of it. I do want a few things higher up on the walls, so for now, it's a shelf. Again, I'm still not sure I'm happy with this decision, um, but for now, it's in my project. The nice thing about my project is if I rip something off the wall and it rips the wallpaper, you're probably not going to notice. Next I'm going to make the pipe that goes from the sink into the wall, and I'm going to use Q-tips again, and I'm going to use the same bending method that I used for the faucet head to make this shape, and then I am going to use the tacky glue on top of eighth inch strips of cardstock. I'm going to wrap this around both ends of my pipe. This is going to make it look like I have a joint in my pipe, and it's also going to make a wider gluing surface for when I attach it to the sink and the wall. I'm going to paint this piece the same exact way I did the sink and the faucet with a base coat of gray and then silver metallic paint over top. Now I'm going to add it in using tacky glue and I really like the way this turned out. The pipe might be one of my favorite parts of this project um, or this part of the project because it just adds that extra step of realism to have a pipe in there. It may not be completely accurate with plumbing standards. Uh, but for my knowledge of plumbing, I really like it. 
So, um, you may be saying, uh, you don't have a drain in your sink. <laughs> well, um, later on I plan to add resin with a few things in the sink. It's probably going to be pretty dirty water, so I'm not too worried about that. I didn't think I needed to add that extra step. Now I'm on to aging the countertop. I had aged it already, but as you can see, like I said, the wood soaked in the paint. So now I'm adding a little bit more paint on top, especially now that it's attached to the wall. I can add paint on the wall. I can add paint um, coming off the sides of the counter, like the water had gone down the counter, down um, to the floor. And so I can age it into my project. This is also my first time trying to emulate rust and really all I did was some watered down brown paint and then I just touched it a little bit with the edge of my finger and um, that was about it and it really does look like rust. So that's it. That's all I have for this week's edition of the Abandoned Coffee Shop Project. I've gotten so many great suggestions from you guys. I'm keeping track of everything. If you have more suggestions, as always, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think about this week's tutorial. Let me know if you try it. I love seeing your pictures. You can always reach me on Instagram. You can leave a comment. Um, as always, I appreciate likes, um, subscribe, and that's it. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you in the next video. Bye!